It's a brand new week, which means a brand new episode of the Locked on Red Sox podcast. Hello, everyone, and happy Monday. Thank you for making Locked on Red Sox your first listen of every single day. I am your host, Nesson writer Lauren Campbell. been in the media scene now for seven years, and I'm alongside my co-host, Massachusetts Pirates team insider, Jake Iggy. We are lifelong New Englanders. We are lifelong Red Sox fans just missing baseball. We have a lot to talk about today. We are very excited for this episode. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, we are going to chat about Nick Pavetta's role with the Red Sox whenever this MLB season begins and if he should get a chance at the closing position. We are also going to rank where we believe the Red Sox bullpen is in the AL East. And as always, we will end the show on our mental health minute. So let's jump right into it. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Red Sox have a lot of questions going into the 2022 season, uh, whenever that begins. And one of those questions, a lot of their questions really has to do with their pitching and their outfield. But today we're going to focus on their pitching and specifically Nick Pavetta. Uh, so in 2021, he had a 9-8 nine and, nine and eight record, 453 ERA, over 32 games that he started. And he pitched well. He was one of the best pitchers through the first five games of the season. He started the season 5-0. and oh. He looked incredibly dominant. And I've said this in previous episodes that even when he struggled and even when he was going through a slump, I loved the way he handled himself. He always took responsibility. It was always, I need to fix what I'm doing. It was never, and whatever, I'll just brush it off, bad start. It was, I sucked and I need to get better. But in the playoffs, when the Red Sox had their really fun and almost magical run, he had a bullpen role and he did pitch really well in the bullpen. He had three games out of the bullpen, 263 ERA with 14 strikeouts. And in 10 out of his 32 games he pitched in the regular season, he allowed three hits or fewer. So Pavetta is returning to the Red Sox next year. And Jake brought up a very interesting point, I believe last week during one of our Lockdown Red Sox episodes, that maybe he should get a shot at the closing role. And I think that you and I, maybe for the first or second time ever, we'll probably disagree on this. So I know that you're kind of pro at least looking into it. So give me, bring me to your side, convince me. (laughs) So you brought up, obviously Nick Pavetta is coming back to the Red Sox in 2022. And when you look at it in 2022, it's his first arbitration eligible year, and he's going to be a free agent in 2025. So I believe that this is the year when you sort of got to figure out, is he going to be a rotation guy? Is he going to be a bullpen guy? Where Where is he really going to fit on this roster in the future? And, and I, I think you got to figure that out now because the Red Sox don't really have a definitive closer right now. You know, as, as we saw last season, Matt Barnes was an all-star closer in the first half, but had a 648 ERA in the second half over 22 games and and sort of just fell off and and sort of looked like he forgot how to pitch. And in terms of Pavetta, I mean, as you, as all Red Sox fans saw in the playoffs, the energy that he came out with, uh, especially when he came out in relief was just so invigorating and it got you really excited as a fan and something with Pavetta, you know, you mentioned the stat of, you know, in 10 of his 32 games pitched, he allowed three or less hits. You know, there was multiple times that we saw him have a no hitter going into the fifth or only allow two hits. And we saw a lot of times when he really got hurt was he when he went around the third time in the order. Obviously, you see a lot, a lot of times um, that happen to pitchers, but I think if he was in that closer position, you'd see a lot of energy come out of the bullpen from Nick Pavetta, as well as you would see a very effective Nick Pavetta. Because, you know, when when he does have to focus on one inning, as we saw in the playoffs, he really comes up big. He does. And I don't disagree with you there. My only thing is, and we have talked to minor league pitchers before about 
going from the bullpen to the starting role and their routines and, you know, just like their lifting routines, their pregame routines. And you just, you always know when you're a starter, when you're going to be pitching. Um, I don't hate the idea of maybe taking a look at it. However, I think there's better options both on the free agent market and internally as well. I do think Matt Barnes, and he said on his Instagram live recently that he is ready to put the, the 2021, the second half of 2021 behind him and to kind of avenge that closing role and seek revenge on what happened last year. And I do think that Alex Cora ultimately will give Matt Barnes that chance. I really like Nick Pavetta in the rotation. I think he's a rotation guy. Um, he always brings the energy, like you said. And maybe when the playoffs roll around, then that's all hands on deck. And maybe you can use him out of the out of the bullpen there. I I would like to keep him in the starting rotation. He can give you the depth that you need. He's proven that he can pitch um, as a starter. Obviously, he's been a starter for his career. And I would love to see Garrett Whitlock as the closer. And I know that he was drafted as a starter. He was lights out from the bullpen last season. A really you know a bright spot on this Red Sox team during the dark time, like during darker times in their season. And he was just a very fun story to follow that the rule five draft pick got him from the Yankees that didn't really know what he was going to be this year, if anything. And he was incredibly reliable. I would love to see him in the closing role. If he's up for it, maybe they want to stretch him into a starter. I don't know. I'm not Alex Cora. I'm not high in bloom, but I think that going into the 2022 season, I think it's Matt Barnes's job to lose, which if, you know, looking at his numbers that second half of last season, People are probably like, that's not going to be hard at all for him to lose. But I think Garrett Whitlock should get a chance at this, at the closing role, if he can, especially if he can mirror what he did last year. I, I don't, I don't hate the Whitlock idea. I, in terms of Pavetta, I, I see him as a rotation guy as well, but it just makes me nervous with how inconsistent he is at times you know he does go through those stretches as we've talked about where he is very dominant on the mound but when he gets around that third um when he gets around uh the third time that hitters are, are going to see him we've seen him blow up a lot and you know it's it's really it's really kind of concerning for me because i mean he, he's only pitched five years in the mlb and he, he has a 516 era as a starter and you know looking at a rotation like what is that a, a five number five number, number five, four yeah. rotation and so you know when looking at it a guy who isn't a free agent until 2025 as i mentioned when i first started off you just got to figure out where are you going to fit him best and i i think i think as you mentioned you know this is really barnes's role to lose there's a lot of answers uh that we're waiting on in terms of the red Sox bullpen obviously adam Adovino, He's no longer in the bullpen. Uh, he's a f currently a free agent as well as Hanzo Robles. So there's a lot of holes to be filled within that unit. And I, I think in terms of uh, Pavetta, I, I think obviously you got to see how he does the first few months. If he if he's if he's not living up to the expectations, maybe try and see what he can do in that closer role. You know, let, let's say let's say it blows up and you know the Red Sox don't have anybody. Who, who they can fully rely on. I, I think you got to give Whitlock, or, uh, excuse me, Pavetta a chance. <laughs> yeah, see, you got to give Whitlock a chance. Thank you for coming to my side. But, you know, I think that, I think people like Matt Barnes, especially, will have a short leash. And, you know, if he can, if Matt Barnes, listen, if he can return to first half Matt Barnes from 2021, all, I'm all for him. Continuing being the closer and put Nick Pavetta in the, in the rotation, um, I'm not sold on Nick Pavetta going into the into the bullpen or into the closing role. I, I, I understand what you're saying. The, the third time through the lineup, he gets shelled. It's like a Tanner Houck situation. When you start getting through the lineup a few times, you start to struggle. The batters start to figure it out. Um, maybe this is when you, know, these, you see pitchers start not pitching as, as deep into games as they have been. But you mentioned some free agent options. You know, there's Joe Kelly out there. There's Andrew Andrew Chafin, Micah Givens, Ian Kennedy, Archie Bradley. We could go down and down this list, um, and it would just we could do this for years, uh, for for hours. But with the lockout, you we just have no idea where anyone's going to go. But the bullpen certainly is an area of concern. Even if you were to put Pavetta into the bullpen, then you're you're still looking at a, a rotation with tons of holes in it. 
you have pitchers in Michael Waka and James Paxton who may not even pitch. So where do they belong in this in this group of pitchers? This rotation in the bullpen, they're not, I don't want to say I'm concerned, but they're areas of concern, if that makes sense. Because um, even if, like I said, even if you put Pavetta into that bullpen role, there's still multiple holes to fill. Yeah, and... <clears throat> You know, the, the, I, I think I think there's a lot of question marks in terms of and we can do another episode on this about where where Waka, where Hill and where Paxton really fit into this whole pitching depth and how we could potentially see the Red Sox use him. Because as, as we all know, you know, they also got Whitlock and Hauk, who who knows where they're going to fit them. Right. You, you know, what I mean, are they going to be in the rotation? Are they going to be a long reliever? Are they going to switch them back and forth depending on the opponents? But you know, I, I think I think it would be really interesting um, to you know give it a shot, see how it goes. But at the end of the day, as you mentioned, I, I think that they'll give Barnes a short leash. Um, but ultimately, my prediction is, is that is that Barnes will probably be the setup man, and, and they'll they'll get a they'll get a closer um, either through free agency or or they'll just do it through committee. Um, but I, I'm just so sick of this through committee crap because yeah. we we've had it since. Since Craig Kimbrell left, and yep. you know, I'm, I'm just so used to John the Papelbon coming in, or you know, Craig Kimbrell coming in, just knowing that they're going to shut the door. And right. you know, I, I I just hate um, when I see a surprise uh, going into the bottom of the ninth in the bullpen, and ha- you know, a- almost biting off my fingernails <laughs> d- d- down just because I'm so nervous. And I I, th- I think it really will be interesting to see how it all plays out, but. Um, we asked you guys on Twitter what you guys thought about a potential um, move for Nick Pavetta to the closed position. Um, some of some of you guys, um, like uh, Jorge's Modern Life, um, said, I-, I wouldn't mind seeing Pavetta close. Uh, some guys like Jermaine uh, Bowie said no. Um, another guy like Ryan Brady said yes, yes, and yes, Pavetta should close. <laughs> um, so, somebody like uh, Not the Bull said no, get Josh Hader. And, he brings up a great point. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of a lot of great options out there. There's a lot of different possibilities that the Red Sox could go either through free agency or the trade market. But as you mentioned, Lauren, we, we can't answer those questions with the lockout. But um, let us know your guys' thoughts through Twitter. Yeah. If you have not followed us over there, it's LO underscore Red Sox. The last thing is, for better or for worse, the Red Sox have depth. It's just a matter of where these guys go and if they're going to be beneficial to the team. You could have a ton of depth. You could have a plethora of pitchers or outfielders. You could have a plethora of minor leaguers. And if they're not going to provide reliability and stability to your team, there's no point in having that depth. Hopefully this is not the case with the pitchers. I hope that it they all play a major role in the Red Sox for the Red Sox in 2022 and a good role at that. But uh, Garrett Whitlock for closer 2022. But in our second segment, Jake and I are going to rank the Red Sox bullpen. We're going to rank them throughout the AL East. I just want to take a second to talk to you about Mission Impossible. Are you ready to discover your purpose and leave an impact wherever you go? Mission Impossible, written and read by New York Times bestselling author and athlete Tim Tebow encourages you to find your inspiration, pursue your purpose, and create a life for yourself that counts. Ignite a new spark in your life through the new inspirational listen. Mission Impossible by Tim Tebow is available everywhere audiobooks are sold. Go and check it out now. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. Check out Locked On MLB Prospects, where host Lindsey Crosby is your prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So we, in our last episode or two episodes ago, we ranked the rotation, the Red Sox starting rotation. It was a little bit difficult because we're not exactly sure how it looked. We did the best we could with what was given to us and the pitchers given to us. So this time we're going to do the bullpen. And you just heard us talk in the first segment about Pavetta potentially being a closer out of the bullpen, maybe Whitlock. Will it be Matt Barnes's job to lose? All that good stuff. So the Red Sox bullpen, along with the Orioles, the Blue Jays, the Yankees, and the Rays, that's a tough division. The AL East is always a tough division. And much like the starting rotation, there's a lot of unknown going into the 2022 season with the bullpen. So I have to put the Red Sox bullpen 
unfortunately at number four because I think they're better than the Orioles, but I don't think they're better than the Blue Jays, Yankees, and Rays. I'm in the same boat. There's just so many holes to fill, um, as we mentioned in the first segment. You know, really, really, other than Whitlock and Barnes, like the most dependable guys are – Josh Taylor and, and your favorite pitcher on the Red Sox, Ryan Brazier. And you know, <laughs> oh. who who knows who knows how they're gonna use Sawamora. You know what I mean? Right. Who who knows if he's even on the team in 2022? Who knows if they'll even give him another chance after um in 54 innings he had a 450 ERA? Um it, it's it's really tough to to you know rank them that way, but you know, also looking at the Blue Jays as well as the Yankees and Rays bullpens, they, they, they just have a lot more uh reliable Stabil- depth yeah stability you know when looking at the blue jays uh they have guys like uh tim tim Meza, you know as, as well as uh yime garcia uh who, who are reliable guys and you, you know it's it's tough it's tough as a red sox fan uh to rank them that way but you know there's just so many question marks going into this offseason there is and we address some of them in the first segment here it's their closer it's their their setup men Saramora, what will he be like? Uh, where will Tanner Houck and Garrett Whitlock pitch? What do you do with Michael Waka, Rich Hill? Will Rich Hill be a starter at 42? Is he 42? Um, there's so many questions. And then you go and you look at the Yankees bullpen, the Blue Jays bullpen, and there's so much, like you said, stability there. There's reliability. There's, I mean, a role this Chapman is what he is. He's given up. He's blown a lot of games. It's fantastic when it happens against the Red Sox. It's fantastic when it happens because it's the Yankees and we're Red Sox fans. And this is a Red Sox podcast. But, you know, you know he's going to go in there and throw heat every single time. He's going to throw incredibly fast. He's going to attack hitters. Um, and same with the Rays bullpen. There's just so much. I'm looking at it now. There's so much depth there. Like, they have – Jalen Beeks, Sean Armstrong, Andrew Kitteridge, like what this, why can't, why can't Red Sox have the depth that they do? And you know, I'll give Brazier credit. He pitched well in some parts of the season toward the end. And he did go through a lot last year. He got hit off the head when he was close to returning. He lost his father. There was a lot there. And, you know, I don't, I'm not going to crap on the guy for going through a tough time. We all go through tough times, but he didn't pitch well. And that's, you know, he wasn't a pitcher who was reliable and then all of a sudden he stunk. He just was not healthy last year. Maybe that's all it was and he'll bounce back. I'm thinking very positive, but it's hard to be positive with a bullpen in, in a very stiff competition like the AL East and that stacked division that's always, that's always incredibly competitive. When you go through the other bullpens of the teams, minus the Orioles, and you go into and you're deep diving and you're looking at this and you're like, Man, these guys, their their ERAs, that some of them are a little higher than they should be for a bullpen. But when you go into the Yankees, I mean, you have the whips are really low. Their strikeouts are high. And it's bullpen pitching wins you games. I said that a lot last year in the playoffs. I said that a lot during the regular season. Pitching helps to win you games. And if you can't rely on your bullpen, which was a lot of, a lot of issues for the Red Sox last season, it's going to be a problem and you do not want to lose a four, one game because your bullpen could not hold on to a lead. And that was something that we saw, especially in the second half for the Red Sox is, is that like as fans, you know, you, you would get that starter out of the game and you're, you're just shaking in nervousness, like not knowing if the bullpen is going to absolutely yeah. blow it up. And you, you know, we even saw that in the playoffs. I'll never forget that, uh, that game, uh, against the Astros when I, I, I can't remember the exact score, but it, they ended, they ended up scoring like nine runs to end the oh, game. That was, and, the, and, that was the last Diaz game. The, yeah, the, and, the missed calls. Oh yeah. But I mean, just in, I mean, that was the biggest thing going into the playoffs that every fan was nervous about. I mean, as you mentioned, you, you not only, not only pitching wins, wins uh world series, but bullpen wins you world yep. series. And, you know, we've seen throughout the throughout the years how important it is. And, you know, I, I think Heim Bloom understands uh, how how thin and unreliable it was. You know, he, he mentioned that in a lot of his comments, especially going into that second half. So, you know, as fans, we're crossing our fingers that he makes it a massive priority uh, 
during this, you know, second part of the off season. But, you know, for me, it's, it's uh, Orioles five, Red Sox four, Blue Jays three, Yankees two. And, and then the Rays one, as you mentioned, yeah. they just have so much depth and, you know, their team who, you know, Hein Bloom came from and, and he, he sort of came up with the opener approach. And, and that's one of the biggest reasons why they have so much depth is, you know, if they need to plug somebody in after three to four innings, they have the ability to and they have the reliable, the reliable guys to be able to make it happen. Yeah, uh, my rankings are exactly the same. It's funny because I put the Blue Jays um, starting rotation at number one and their bullpen at number three. It's funny how that kind of works sometimes, but I think that the Yankees are number two and I think the Rays are number one. Um, it's close, but I don't think it was as close as my Blue Jays and Rays starting rotation. I just think, I mean, you nailed it. The Rays have so much depth. And whether that stems from them having the openers, they're having the ability to have pitchers go two innings, five innings, maybe stretch them out to six innings. It's just, they're a really good team. And it's unfortunate they cannot get fans into the trap. But I, I'm glad the TV ratings are really good down there, that people are watching them because they're young, they're fun. And these are guys that it's kind of mixed where there's some stars on this team. There's some definitely coming up stars like Randy Rosarena. And there's people are going to want to start playing for the Rays, going to the World Series, con continually going, getting into the playoffs. This is going to be a desirable team, and their bullpen is part of what makes that desirable. Very true. And, you know, they just have so many guys coming up, you know, as we talked about in, in our last episode. They, they have the number one farm system in the MLB, and, you know, that's why we, we just got to be grateful that, you know, we, we – pricked one of their best guys from, from their front office. Yeah. So now he's going to try and make that happen for the Red Sox. But I mean, it, it is going to be interesting to see what sort of potential guys that we do see from the minor leagues potentially come up and, and get some time in the bullpen, you know, uh, maybe Cutter Crawford as, as well as yeah. uh, Connor Siebold. Uh, you know, we saw both of them do very well uh, in, in AAA last season. So who knows? We could potentially see them come up get a few innings, get get a few looks. But, um, you, you know, there's just so many guys out there on the open market that the Red Sox could go and grab uh, as, as well as through the trade market. So I I, I think, you know, uh, Heimblum has, has said, especially before the lockout, you know, his goals after this, uh, after these negotiations do end to get a right-handed bat as well as bolster up that bullpen because there's, there's just so many holes. And as fans, you know, you, you just got to help us, you know, get the stress levels down a little bit. You know, we're not trying to have a heart attack every, every time the fifth inning or the sixth inning rolls around. Yeah, seriously. I can't, can't do that again. And I think the Red Sox do have the opportunity here to kind of jump in our rankings, at least on my side, if they make the proper moves once this lockout ends and they kind of situate this bullpen and set them up to be successful. I think that the, the pieces are there. The piece, and they're not missing too many pieces. So they do have the opportunity to jump in our rankings. Um, just not right now because it they're not giving me a lot to work with here, and to or to give me much faith that they're going to be much better than the Yankees, Rays, and Blue Jays. Um, so yeah, we have. Oh, I was sorry, just gonna go say, like in in the in the rankings following, you know, we're, we're going to be doing the lineup. We're going to be doing the manager as well, and I I, I think that. If, the pitching, as we've talked about, is their biggest Achilles heel. Yeah. But I think when we talk about those subjects, they're going to be pretty high on our list. I'm so excited to talk about the manager. Like that, I think that's <laughs> going to be our best one. Uh, we have one more segment to get to. We will be doing our mental health minute. But I just want to tell you about Built Bar really quick. It's the time of the year now where I've pretty much given up on my New Year's resolutions, but not in 2022. I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right, and that is thanks to Built Bar. And if you have not tried the Bilt Bar Puffs, you are missing out. It's one of Bilt Bar's best tasting bars. They're the first ever protein infused marshmallow. So they're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, and they're not just a protein bar. They're like a treat that's covered in 100% real chocolate. And all Bilt Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. They're low calorie, they're high protein. And if you go to Bilt.com and scroll on down to their macros chart, you'll be blown away. 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. There's mint brownie, there's coconut, coconut almond, and my personal favorite, cookies and cream. There's a flavor out there for everyone, and they're constantly coming out with new flavors. If you head on over to built.com right now, use promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. 
And then this episode is also brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for you to, for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. So why endure pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning? Like, is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? Like, I don't even know who knows that. And why wait? Are the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? Your computer, you have computers with access to rockauto.com at your home and in your pocket. So save time and money when using Rock Auto. And also, Rock Auto is a family business serving do it yourself, doing yourselfers, excuse me, uh, for over 20 years, and their prices are reliably low for every customer. So go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So then they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Sox podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. In our third and final segment, we are going to do our quick mental health minute. And it's a new week, so we can start this week on a positive note. It's a brand new week to just tackle it with positivity, tackle it with the best intentions you can, and just try to not let the little things get to you. That is so much easier said than done. I totally get that. I am somebody who sometimes lets the little things bother her way too much, but being able to just wake up, start my day with a perfect cup of coffee and just get myself in the right mindset of I'm going to have a good day. I'm going to give my all this week. I'm going to do my best this week is just such a much more positive mindset than being like, oh, another day, have to go to work, have to do this, have to work out. Um, it's We have to do it anyway. And it's something that I've learned to be way more grateful for than be agitated by. And so, sometimes it's best to just change that wording. I get to do that stuff because yes. there's a lot of people who don't get to do that stuff. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> I, I saw a really cool quote today and um, it was by Melanie. Car I don't know. I'm not even going to try the last name, um, but it's it's life is so short. We spend so much time sweating the small stuff, worrying, complaining, gossiping, uh, comparing, wishing, wanting and waiting for something bigger and better instead of focusing on all the simple blessings that surround us every day. Life is so fragile and all it takes is a single moment to change everything you take for granted. Focus on what's important and be grateful. You are blessed, believe it, live your life and leave no regrets. And I, I think that's so important because, um, you know, so, so many times we're, instead of being grateful for where we're at for, for, and for being grateful for what we have, um, it's easiest thing into the future. It's easy to think about what what we could have and the better things that we could have. But obviously, it's great to have goals. Obviously, it's great to have aspirations. But it's it's also very important to live in the moment, stay in the present, and be grateful for where you're at and what you have around you at the moment. One hundred percent. Like never get complacent. You know, just always try to work hard to to do more, to do better. But don't sit there and be like, oh, I have to do this to get to th to this aspect of my life, or I wish I was doing this instead of that you can still get there and you're on you're on your own path you're following your own path no one has the same path as you you don't have the same journey as your friends or the person that you're aspiring to be you'll get there in due time and it's just a matter of being patient but i think that's a, a good spot to end there uh check back later on this week we're going to be ranking as jake said the lineups the red sox managers we're super excited hopefully we'll have good lockout news trying to stay optimistic here uh, rate, review, and subscribe to Locked On Red Sox wherever you get your podcast right here on YouTube. Check out all the other MLB shows across the Locked On Network, Locked On A's, Locked On Astros, Locked On Yankees, Locked On MLB. Everyone does a really good job, especially during this lockout right now. Follow Locked On Red Sox on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox, Jake at Jake Iggy, and me at La 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 Lauren. Three laws, Lauren with four R's. And rate, review, and subscribe. I already said that. And let us know what you want to hear. Drop us a DM. Drop us a comment. And tell us what we can do because we'd love to hear from you. But until next time, we'll talk soon.